Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast all about movies. Each episode is about a different movie, and we'll get to this episode's movie in a little bit. But first, I gotta thank everyone who voted in the fan vote for what movie we're gonna watch next, and that will be revealed at the end of the episode, so stay tuned. Uh, don't go over to my Twitter account and see what won in you know, that spoiler <laughs> territory, okay? Uh, but uh, before we get into today's episode's movie, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, man, uh, I am Kyung the Ferret, and I'm here with... <laughs> Rumble Waffles. Uncle Tay. Darn it, I was going to say Uncle Callus. <laughs> uh, you can be Auntie Callus. <laughs> sure, Auntie Callus. <laughs> No, you're just callous, not anti callous, just callous. <laughs> but don't call him just callous. Call him just but, callous. Yeah, exactly. Just callous. <laughs> uh, how are we all doing today? Everyone doing good? Doing yeah, good. doing pretty good. Uh, can I just say real quick? No. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> oh, I guess I can, according to Greedy. <laughs> what do you got uh, for us, callous? I was just gonna say, I recently I've been on a real Jackie Chan kick recently. I've I got myself the Jackie Chan Collection Volume One from Shout Factory, which includes seven movies from uh, seventy six to eighty two. And so far, I've only seen one. It's called uh, Battle Creek Brawl. It was and uh, a quick thirty second review. It was a very fun movie. But it seems like Jackie Chan is really the only person trying. Like, everyone they pit him against didn't really know any, uh, like, martial arts and just kind of, like, giving it very low efforts compared to Jackie Chan. So because of that, it's, like, a not a great movie. But, I mean, Jackie Chan was great in it, so it's still good. Well, I feel like that's a more say... accurate movie. <laughs> like, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> like, in a lot of these movies, I'm like, this guy wouldn't know Kung Fu. <laughs> Yeah, but like even like the the kicks and hits, they seem like the very slow and like didn't seem like they really made any contact with him, and it was just like not very well made, you know. When did that one come out? That one's an uh, eighty one, eighty or eighty, I think nineteen eighty. Eh. That's long ago enough that I feel like maybe uh, maybe he was just was that like when he was just getting started and like maybe people he didn't have like the the reach he did. No, he was actually already very popular and had done a bunch of movies by then. Hmm. Weird. Okay. They can't all uh, be zingers, you know? I think Yeah, I think it's because it's like one of the very early uh, hints of like him trying to make movies in the U.S. There's like a whole bunch of non-Asian actors there, so. Hmm. Yeah. Or maybe just he had come off another movie and was super injured, so everyone had to be like super <laughs> delicate with him. <laughs> That's yeah. another possibility. Yeah. He's like, "Don't touch me, it's fragile." <laughs> I hurt. I hurt my back at the end of this, so let's all just take this one easy, okay? <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, as as we've seen from the movie that we're talking about today, that doesn't really slow him down at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, speaking of the movie that we're talking about today, Callus, why don't you go ahead and introduce it for us? Sure thing. Now there's a transition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this time around, I chose Rumble in the Bronx, released in 1995. Um, the quick synopsis is a young man visiting and helping his uncle in New York City finds himself forced to fight a street gang and the mob with his martial arts skills. It was directed by Stanley Tong, stars Jackie Chan, of course, and Anita Mui, Francois Yip, Bill Tan, and many more. So. I would like to start this conversation by asking, uh, so this Bill Tong character, Uncle Bill, mm -hmm. am I wrong, or was he also called Uncle Bill in the Police Story movies? Yes, he was. Yep. Yeah, He's yeah. always Uncle Bill. <laughs> yep. That's what I was right. thinking the whole time, too. I was like, wasn't he, like, in Police Story? Like, oh, yeah, he was... That he is was Bill Tong, is or... it? Yeah, Bill Tong, yeah, he was the yeah. uh, commander. <laughs> He just used his real name. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. I, in in some of the police story movies, he, you know, Jackie Chan was just called Jackie. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird change. <laughs> yeah, this one, Jackie Chan actually has a different name. So. Yeah. 
I was confused yeah, for a second. There was a so, like a side character, or I guess NPC. Yeah, there was. What they called Jackie and yes. Wait, someone screwed up. They said his name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're talking about someone else. Okay. One of the friends in the the club. Yeah. That was funny. But yeah, um, what do you want I to guess start? we can start like a. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was my starting point. Um, so yeah, the let's just I guess start from the beginning. So it took like uh, was it me or like did uh did everyone else seem like it had the movie had like a very slow start? Like there wasn't really anything going on in like the first twenty minutes or so. Yeah, it definitely I mean, it starts off all, a little a little slow. Yeah, you know? yeah, it was all. I mean, it's all set up, it's just fine. But I guess just setting up the story. Yeah, although I will say, whoever wrote the dialogue for this movie. <laughs> Did a really <laughs> shitty job. Like the yeah, dialogue was sure so did. bad, and there were so many times where it just took me out of the story. I was like, that was like the most unnatural way you could have said that. Story was there even a story? <laughs> yeah, the, the story was a bit incoherent uh, throughout yeah. the entire thing. Like any, everything they set up at the beginning of the movie, like a lot of it later on doesn't even matter <laughs> in the yeah. end. Um, yeah, and I don't know if this is just a problem with the. English version of this movie. Uh, I, I don't know if the same problem is in the Jap or the the Chinese version, but the overdubbing of the English actors was just atrocious. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it really like it. I struggled. I really that started to struggle. Overly noticeable how just everyone was dubbed. It, was it doesn't make very, any sense because uh... this is the English version of the movie. Why are they dubbed? You know. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> It sucks when, you know, they, you know, like, in the movie, they say, you know, like, two seconds worth of stuff, and then it's like, 30 seconds later, the voice is still going over, the dubbing voice, it's just like, alright, this is a little obnoxious. Yeah, which also didn't help, I think, like, it just, it emphasized the bad dialogue, because <laughs> it was just like, it didn't quite, it's like, the, the mouth movement didn't quite work, and... You can tell they're speaking English. Why am I not hearing the original English they were speaking? Right, and it has that same problem as like uh, other movies we've watched that are that have the dubbed English voice actors. Like from Police Story, there was a few in there yeah. um, where the person giving the performance probably gave it their all on set, and then in the booth, they're like, you know, they're doing like mm. their little screams and their ahs and their voice <laughs> yeah. lines, and they just aren't putting enough emphasis on it, or they don't. Like, it just sounds like they're recording in a booth, you know? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Which is unfortunate because, like I said, I don't know if the Chinese version actually has the English voice acting or if that's dubbed too. Um, I'll, I'll be interested to find out. And I also found out that the, the Chinese version of the movie is like an extra 20 minutes. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which, like, so well, you can yeah, tell I don't that know. <laughs> in like, the credits where they show like all the different like scenes and bloopers and stuff. Like, there's a scene... Or you can tell there was something else that happened at the wedding, and mm -hmm. then um, the the chick who bought the store like there's a scene of her, like there was a shot of her like lighting fireworks and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, those things never happened. True, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to take my headphones off for a few seconds. What uh, what did I miss? <laughs> um... I had said that oh, there's an extra twenty minutes in the Chinese version of this movie. Yeah, oh. an extra twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's I'm wishing I had. I'm guessing. Chinese. I'm guessing those twenty minutes aren't at the end of the movie and flesh out the ending. Yeah, right. No, probably not. That's, <laughs> that's a long Jan's movie to staple. begin with. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, I'm pretty sure that's also how it ended. <laughs> hmm. Yay! Which we ran also... over the bad guy. No. <laughs> no. It's like okay, but. Yeah, we'll talk about the ending later, but yeah, I definitely want to <laughs> talk about. That. Yeah, let's let's build up to that because I think yeah. I was the most annoyed by that, even though. I, I was, I mean, as I already mentioned, I, I think the story in this one is just really weird. Um, yeah. Like you, you, I coming from police story and like how all four of those movies had a pretty good story, except for maybe the third one, which funny enough, this movie is directed by the same person who did the third and fourth. So <laughs> I just like I don't know. I just I found this movie kind of like it was still fun, but I just kind of found it annoying <laughs> too. Yeah. yeah. Um, it also uh, seemed random too, like just random <laughs> scenes. 
which I know it's a Jackie Chan movie, which it's a lot. You know, Police Story did have some random scene too, and you know, just his movies in general do. But it just I don't know, it just seemed more random than normal. Yeah. And there's also like there's some uh, serious Jackie Chan movies, and then like some comedic Jackie Chan movies. And this one just seems to be like stuck somewhere, like in between. Like they weren't sure which direction to go, whether like super serious or like more comedic side. Yeah, because so you have that... a part where like the bottles are exploding in his face and he's bleeding and he's on the floor and they're about to shoot him. Yeah. And then later on, Jackie Chan's hiding in a truck full of bouncy balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> and that, okay, so throughout the whole movie, you just have these horrible people um, just doing horrible, horrible things, like destroying stores, running over cars. And... Destroying one store, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, destroying one store. And it's just like, it gets to the point where it's like, okay, this, none of this is believable. Like, that it would go this far and, like, that there would be no consequences for these people. Mm. They're a 90s gang. Yeah. Well, the one, the one thing that threw me off was, you know, during that bottle scene, everyone's having a good time. And then the one dude who got his nose broken by Jackie, or Kung, Kung, um, <laughs> He pulls out a pistol. Everyone's like, whoa, whoa, hold on now, dude. What are you doing? You know, and they, they're like, fuck you. Why are you pulling out? Well, you don't want to kill this guy. Yeah. And then in the next scene that we see the gang, the gang leader pulls out a pistol and tries to shoot at him. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the heck happened? Right. Well, like, I feel like at the end of the scene where they're doing the bottles and stuff, they like, they're like, okay, yeah, we've we've settled the score. And then, yeah, the next scene, they're looking for him to kill him. And you're like, right. Okay, what? It makes no sense. You know, the guy yeah. drives through a bunch of, you know, patio furniture, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, chase, you know, running him down in the parking lot, garage. And yeah, I just, just I don't get I don't get why, like, I would understand if it was the guy who had originally pulled the gun out leading the squad. But it's the leader guy who who scolded at the yeah. at the tattooed kiss my ass dude. You know, I, I just, it just, the, the, the character motivation just flip-flops so quickly in this movie. Um, maybe that's one of the things that uh, we get to cut. see in the <laughs> extension. Yeah, maybe, in the yeah, maybe there was another things. deleted scene that he pissed him off again. <laughs> that would make more sense than just suddenly, yeah, the settle scored. Or it's not. No, I, I slept on it. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, like this. Die. Or the scene where they're, they have the kid in the wheelchair and they go get ice cream. They're like, oh, you want ice cream? But they leave them, you know, like 20 yards away from the ice cream truck. It's like, <laughs> yeah. what? Like, why, why would you leave them so far away by himself? I will say most movies would not go as uh, as far as this one does with, like, beating up a kid, you know, the yeah. and especially a kid in a wheelchair. You know, the, the <laughs> right. guy throws him out, and then later on, like, the guy in the suit's, like, slapping him with his gun and stuff like that. Like, not many movies are going to go this far with... With that kind of thing. But then again, you know, it's <laughs> originally not an American movie, so yeah. that probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah, and then that scene where they, you know, beat the kid up, and then Jackie's trying to beat up the guy, and he's like, your punchers do nothing. And then the kids are like, here's a helmet. Here's a wrench. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, the helmet made funny. sense. It was funny. But, like, the helmet <laughs> made sense. It's like, where'd this kid get a wrench, and how did he throw it? Yeah, the, the, like you said, the movie's kind of stuck somewhere in between... You know, a serious movie and a goofy movie, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't strike a perfect balance as some other of uh, Jackie Chan's repertoire yeah. does. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But I mean, it makes sense that the kid was able to throw the wrench because you know he's been pushing wheelchair all day, so you know he, his arms <laughs> could be buff. pretty strong. You're right. <laughs> it didn't look buff, but you're right. <laughs> it's the strength within, Tay. Mm, yes. It's the kung fu within. <laughs> it's that uh, life or flight, you know in him you know he was scared so his body was going the extra mile you mean fight or flight what what did i say life or flight yeah, yeah you said that's life. what i meant <laughs> you know what i meant what do you guys uh think of the kid overall like I throughout mean, the movie as an actor just being there it's hard to tell because of the the bad dubbing and the bad dialogue yeah it was like, hard to tell <laughs> yeah. is it the is it the kid or is it just 
at you know at everything else. That's just like that no, just that's honestly a good point because I found the kid really annoying throughout this movie. I maybe <laughs> maybe it was now that you said that maybe it was just the dubbing. No, it definitely but, was the dubbing because I I, he... I found his voice just annoying and everything was just so annoying. It it definitely but. was the dubbing because like I bet on set he was fine. And then he had to go into a studio, and he's a kid. You know, he's not a you know he's not a, a, a matured actor yet. You know, and he's in the studio like just you know saying the voice lines in a monotone voice. You know, <laughs> I just um, I I think that he I think that he he would have been fine. And you know me, I you know kid actors bug me the hell the, the hell and back. Um, I think he would have been fine without the dubbing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just such yeah, a weird choice a that they made with, with that. that. But I, that was one of my big takeaways is the annoying kid. And this is like the only version that I've seen in the past. I had never seen like the, the actual Chinese version, which I'm, I'm very interested to watch now. Yeah, it wasn't Let's on Amazon. Find it. Yeah. There was two versions of Amazon, but they both looked like the same one. So I, I don't know. There are two? For me, there was. Maybe one of them was one of those ones that wasn't playable because they have those every so often. Yeah. I don't know. I just searched Rumble in the Bronx, and it's like, here it is on Prime. And I was like, cool. And also, now, uh, like, uh, uh, sorry, what were you going to say? I was just, now I want to see the, the the original version. Find it, Callus. <laughs> Let's all watch it together. Yeah, that's Callus' next what recommendation do. is the extended <laughs> version of Rumble in the Bronx. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was going to say, because uh, I saw like, on some of the trivia for this movie that Originally, the the producers had in mind to call it Rumble in Vancouver, <laughs> which I'm very confused about. But I mean, I guess like a whole later half of the movie happens was like filmed in Canada. But um, I don't know. Like, I guess they they wanted to make it seem like it was still New York. I'm very confused about like all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess take out a couple scenes of like the skyline shots with the world trade center maybe you could pass it for vancouver but (laughs) then you gotta like get different actors with canadian accents and stuff you know no no you don't and i was like a lot of it probably was shot in vancouver those were just aerial shots of new york and then it's all shot like all the street shots are vancouver yeah maybe (laughs) and i don't take out this take out those aerial shots and that the grandpa says or the uncle's like this is manhattan but my shop's in the bronx yeah, in in New York they wouldn't let them run over people with the with the airship, but in Vancouver right. they they gave them the thumbs up. So <laughs> it was an easy choice for Jackie. Yeah, yeah, that that air thing. What's it called? Um, hovercraft. 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 Yeah, the hovercraft was definitely Canadian as well as the chopper. And also, I I saw that like I heard that some of the beach scenes were filmed in China. Really? So, yeah, this, they they filmed this place this thing all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, I guess um, you know, we always like to talk about the action in these Jackie Chan movies because usually the martial arts and stuff is the the key part that this really starts. elevates <laughs> the experience. Um, I found a couple scenes to be very really entertaining. Um, the one where he's like using garbage to fight essentially was kind of cool. He like makes a makeshift like a uh, monkey bar and he's like up over and up and mm. t- on top yeah, that, of it. That was good. And then, and then uh, later on, the gang hideout when he's like throwing yeah. people through pinball machines. I also found that to be a pretty fun sequence as well, especially yeah, when he pulls maybe. out like the ski. Was it a ski? Um, yeah, it was. It was yeah. <laughs> it seemed pretty dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and like when he's using like using the fridge also to fight. And he yeah, the, that was that was the cool. guys in there. Yeah, and that that's the scene where like the boss of the gang starts like fighting in kung fu and stuff i was like this guy wouldn't know kung fu <laughs> yeah he may be st- like let him know street fighting or something fine but like he's like doing kung fu like clearly and you're like no i'm sorry yeah unfortunately my favorite scene in the movie is also the one that after that the story just becomes completely <laughs> incoherent because <laughs> Jackie Chan beats up all the guys and they're like just go just go and he's like I hope someday we'll fight together as friends or whatever and then immediately like a, a second later they get a, the guy walks in with the with the bag and the guy who was killed and um plan. yeah and uh they're like we need Jackie Chan's help <laughs> we need to join <laughs> forces I'm like what the heck is going on <laughs> like yeah, like when the when the mob 
guys first showed up and like and they crashed into the uh that store the diamonds showed up like for that point on i was like oh yeah they're they're probably gonna like team up in the future somewhere somewhere and like take on these the real bad guys <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, like, the gang members never team up with Jackie Chan. They, they either get captured or Jackie's on his own against, like, mm. the world, essentially. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Against, like, it would have been, It would have been more satisfying if the gang members actually helped, you know, like, and did, something. and did something. But, you know, after their comrade dies, they all just either stay at the base or the leader gets captured and they don't know what to do. I, it, mm. It's, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, somehow by the end of the movie, they're like best friends because like he he let them aboard of the uh, yeah. Uh, and also, the, the, <laughs> the yeah. store owners there, and you're just like, oh, okay, oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> she just randomly just appears funny. in the in the hovercraft at the end. Yeah. There. Like she wants her revenge. I get it, but why is she here? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a good chunk of this movie. They kind of forget about the the store owner. Because there yeah. was like a budding romance happening at the beginning between Chung and uh, whoever her name is. Mm. And then the other girl Nancy. comes in and uh, it's like, yeah. oh, here's the real love. In it's like, okay. Oh, no, no, wait. You're talking about the Nancy comes in later? Yeah. yeah. Elaine is the okay, store. Okay. Elaine, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, you know, there's kind of this budding romance, yeah, between Jack and Elaine. And it's like, okay, yeah, they're, they're probably similar age. And then get this nancy like she's 21 it's like mm, really yeah. jackie <laughs> you're like in your 40s but remember in this movie he's a young man oh that's right <laughs> yeah I, I just found it kind of humorous how you know you, you kind of forget that the store even exists for a little bit in this movie because like yeah. jackie's supposed to be going and helping every day or whatever and instead of doing that he's like you know, helping the kid in the wheelchair, and he's on a date with Nancy, I guess her name is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. speaking of the kid in the wheelchair, did anyone notice that Jackie gave him a uh, Game Gear with no game inside? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I noticed there was no game. I didn't know if it was a Game Gear, but yeah. Yeah, I noticed it was a Game Gear and that there was no game inside. Hey, and later, funding for the game. What was that? Oh, man, everyone just talked at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> No uh, funding for the game. That's a they, they yeah. They couldn't get the budget. license for uh, <laughs> the top of the name of the game to be put into it. <laughs> yeah, right. Probably. And later on, you you hear, you see him playing, and you just hear be beeps and bloops from like Atari era. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Jackie did give it to him from China, so who knows who knows what that thing's modded out with. Oh, that's you, you know you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's modded. Yeah, this has 60 Nintendo games on it. It's a Game Gear. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, back to the store. Like, these guys just, like, going in and putting chains everywhere and then just destroying the whole building. And, like, nothing becomes of that. <laughs> Yeah, like, they're like, and we're the gonna do this have... and that until, you know, you tell us where he is, and then it's like, okay. Yeah. And the police can't step in after they've yeah. looked down and destroyed a building. Yeah. <laughs> it was we don't have like hard that, where it's like, The other one, yeah. like, had the tree ch chipper or whatever, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, and then, like, the one cop was like, don't worry, they won't do anything in public. And the other one's like, they blew up grenades, they threw grenades in public. And I'm like, they tore down a building in public. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a public building in a public space. How I, underst I understand they have a good lawyer, but, you know, that public, you know, destruction, y you know, <laughs> should not, be landing not... them in hot water. Yeah, How good is this lawyer? <laughs> Or I guess they said that he has connections. Ooh, maybe he has connections with the construction company. <laughs> <laughs> connections with the mayor. Who knows? Well, Jackie should be going after this mayor. <laughs> yeah, also, what's with the, the leader, the white lion or whatever he was called? Like, oh, half the movie, he's at, he's at the golf course playing 18 holes of golf. Like, how long did they get to play golf, dude? <laughs> like... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and like, why Why did they go after him all of a sudden? Like, didn't they need... Weren't they trying to get evidence on him? That, like, did they actually ever get hit, get it on him? For them to go after him? No. I think by capturing the goons, they finally 
spilled the beans this time. Maybe. I don't know why they didn't before, but well, now I think it was very obvious that they had done stuff, and there was no, there was no getting them out. So they they squealed. It's also funny that the goo the the goons and the white line himself are the reason why the diamonds go missing at the end of it all because they tear down the building. Yeah. <laughs> Like he could have well, just walked mean, in there and he had the he had the diamonds on him like the entire time. Like yeah. you have <laughs> guns, just go in. Yeah, just go in. Shoot him. Take the diamonds. It's, it's I think that'd be much cleaner and easier than destroying a whole building. Right. But and then you could magically just you know erase all DNA on your weapons by just wearing a glove. Yeah. But you know, this is why we're not uh, crime syndicate bosses. That's right. <laughs> it's so funny how like they they were, they they say they were FBI agents and like, <laughs> Hyung just completely believed them and like called them up himself. At that point, is he he's been there for like what a, a week? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's understandable that he get fooled by that. Yeah, true. Yeah, they, I guess they were wearing suits and all that. <laughs> So, uh, what well, what did you say was your favorite scene, Gimme? Uh, the one where he's like beating everyone up in the gang's hideout with the pool table and the refrigerator yeah, and the, the ski. Pool table. Yeah, I would say that's probably one of my favorite scenes too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is the best fight scene. Um, like so the other fight scene where he like there's like just discarded playground material and he makes monkey bars. <laughs> uh, that was a good. That was a pretty good fight too. Has there been, uh, like, a playground scene in every Jackie Chan movie so far? I feel like there has. A lot of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the first two police stories, at least. Yeah. And this one, Drunken Master, probably had a place. Did, did I have a place? Uh, place? No, I don't think that no, one did. not Drunken Master. Yeah, Drunken Master take, is, like, you know, set in the early 1900s or something. Right? Am I remembering right? No. Um. Well, actually, I think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like I thought, it was like kind of more of a feudal Japan or China than a not that old. Yeah. But... And know. the yeah, you know, the first scene when he's fighting the goons inside the uh, store is kind of good. Yeah. They build a little bit of tension with the knife and stuff like that. Um, that was a pretty good action scene. But yeah, like I I haven't seen this movie in like twenty years, but the one scene that was like ingrained in my mind. Was when he was in the alley and like they were throwing bottles at him. Like that was oh, yeah. a very uh, visceral as, scene. As a, as a kid, yeah, that would be <laughs> for even a teenager, I guess. Yeah, and that's the point where you think it's gonna be more like a serious affair, mm. uh, you know. But um, they still put a little bit of comedy here and there and in, in there. Also, the... uh, I gotta no. Go ahead. And the other, the other scene, like the wood chipper scene, that, that, that oh, that, that was, was that was kind of disturbing wow. as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, when they first put the the branch in, and like they were just being pelted with the like sawdust and and wood chips, I was like, I was like, okay, this this isn't a Fargo scene. And then it turned into a Fargo scene, and I was like, oh, well, damn. Okay. Also, did they move the other guy out of the way because he was like still under there? <laughs> yeah. Well, they must have because when he traveled up, he wasn't covered in blood. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that, no, because guess... they put the they put the garbage bags. Oh, the head bag. Head. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And I like that when everyone looked in the bag, they immediately started throwing up and stuff. Which it's like, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> that's accurate. Like it probably just. Ugh, yeah. They were probably hit with the smell too. But yeah, it was like the smell, the 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 image. But um one of my favorite scenes is probably when uh when Jackie Chan goes, Damn, we're in a tight squeeze. <laughs> oh wait, wrong movie. <laughs> I had to say it, I had to say the line. Yeah, you did. I had to say the wrong line. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, they uh I guess we can talk about the uh the final scene when uh that whole chasing in the hovercraft happens. Um, the the part where he's like in the water, just trailing behind on the rope, uh, that was really cool. That he actually, you know, did that himself. Especially that was with pretty the crazy. Foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I wonder yeah. if he had the broken foot in the water. He may yeah. them say may have been filmed first, uh, but I don't know. I wasn't you know I didn't pay close enough attention to notice that one of his shoes was bigger than the, <laughs> the other one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the spectacle of the ending was was pretty grand. You know, like the hovercraft and the part where you know he, he uses that guy's car as like a and he has, puts like a saw blade on the <laughs> side of it to rip open a hole in it. Like the that grand cool. the grand scale of the ending is great. But it shares a similar problem with almost any other Jackie Chan movie we've, we've watched, besides from Drunken Master, I guess. Which is that the ending just happens, and there's really no resolution. Actually, I prefer Police Story 1's ending to this one. Oh, really? I would, I would rather have, <laughs> oh, like, man, at wild. least a little bit of something than what happened in this movie. Really? Are you sure? Because, I mean, that was, like, a sudden ending in uh, Police Story are you telling me that this one's not like this one's more sudden? Like at least there was a little bit of conclusion at the end of Police Story, but this one, Maybe they run over the guy and it ends, <laughs> and <laughs> you don't know what happens to the to to anyone in the movie. There's not even like title cards at the end, like and then sh- the the store became rebuilt and was profitable, and Jackie Chan went home, and yeah, it's like we get nothing, like absolutely nothing at the end of this movie. Obviously, the gang members all get together and help her rebuild it, and then they become employees as well. Everything comes or, full circle. You know, <laughs> now that they have the guy who destroyed her store, you know he had to pay for it all. And... Mm. Maybe she actually what did manage to hide one of the diamonds. Well, she can probably go through the rubble and find all the diamonds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't that be a great scene at the end of her going through the rubble and finding the bag, or someone finding the bag? You know, I just. Hmm. When you end it where they did, which is just yeah. like a, a pause shot of the of them cheering or whatever after they ran over the guy and stripped <laughs> him down to his ass cheeks, <laughs> like there's just there, it's just it just kind of pisses me off a little bit, you know, because after all of this we need we need some kind of wind down, you know, there needs to be a a conclusion and there just isn't a conclusion. <laughs> also, uh, oh hello, hi. Hello? No, it seemed like it was cutting out there for a second. But um, You're also, fine. how how did the police, how were they convinced to let Kyung drive the hovercraft at the end and they let him tear through a, a golf course like that? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> they still didn't have enough evidence. They they were like, all right, some vigilante justice here. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like the the one scene of the the guy who was piloting the craft, like showing Kyung how to pilot. He's like, "Okay, you got it," and he's like, "Yep," and they just go. <laughs> yeah, they just go. <laughs> and I like that you see that the, like the little rip he tore into is all just duct taped shut. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I, I I think would work, you know. Yeah, no, it would probably. I just think it's like, like there's other hovercrafts, but you know. What? Are there? <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was at least one other one on the docks. Maybe I don't. I don't remember. This seems pretty expensive, though. Yeah, that'd be yeah, one, so many... one uh, for, fortune <laughs> fortune hover, hovercraft service. Yeah. yeah, there's so much destruction. So many cars hit and ran over and destroyed, <laughs> and including that gold Lambo. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the, the 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 spectacle of the end is great. It's just the end sucks. <laughs> <laughs> And there was some weird uh, sound effects that happened throughout the this this movie as well. I, I, uh, the the worst one was um, during the fight scene in in the in the gang's hideout where he uses like that glass bottle to bonk someone on the head, and it makes like a metal ting sound. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I did notice that too. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. And then uh, when the hovercraft's going through the streets, there was like some weird sound effects for people running into things. Like I. Yeah, it kind of took me out of it a little bit. But the the most egregious one was the one with the bottle, and it 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 just kind of made like a metal bang or whatever. Hmm. I, don't know, I mean, it didn't really take me out. I'm kind of used to it at this point with Jack and Chain kind of movies because it's literally in every single one of those movies. So, hmm, but the sound yeah. effects have matched up with what he's doing in those other movies. Like if it was a glass bottle in Drunken Master, it would make a glass bottle sound. Um, I I feel like this is a little bit different from the other movies we've watched i feel like I maybe I mean, they were trying to make it more comical by doing like that metal sound instead yeah maybe i don't know 
because yeah if we were talking about the you know like the punch sounds like that i've gotten you know definitely gotten used to by now but or the 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 guns the machine guns when they were firing Uh always sounded really bad yeah I don't so mind I that, that because that that's yeah. a charm. That's that's charming, you know. I tell you first. <laughs> I was like, I understand that guns, like in Hollywood movies, don't sound like actual guns, but that that didn't sound like actual guns either. Yeah, I'll, I'll harkening all the way back to Drunken Master, we'll talk about that. Like, it's it's still a charming thing for me personally. It's this, like the over the top sound effects for punching people and the guns not sounding like guns. Like, I feel like that's a charming part of at least. Jackie Chan movies or Hong Kong cinema in general. I don't mind the the punching. It, it, the guns was just a little weird because it was just like I don't know. Just takes away any of the danger, I guess. Where you're like, well, they're not. I don't know what they're firing, but they're not guns. Well, I think <laughs> only one person actually got shot in this entire movie, even though they yeah. fired their guns so often. Jackie the one, Chan shot. Yeah, the, the one movie. poor police officer with a cigar. <laughs> no, oh, no, the, the boss man, man gets shot in lane. Oh, does he? he yeah, gets one of, not the boss guy, but one of the the. Oh, henchmen. the oh, Jackie Chan shoots oh, him. Yeah, yeah. The henchman that was driving the hover. That's after. why they started talking because Jackie Chan just shot him in the leg. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, isn't it kind of odd that like, it seems like the only people who died in this movie were black men. Uh, the uh, three, the gangsters in the car at the beginning. Not in the beginning, but kind of halfway through. Yeah, the ones who were selling the guy the who diamonds. got shoved into the wood chipper. This, this movie is kind of racist. That's, thinking about it, that's a good point. I had that didn't, didn't even notice. The cigar guy got shot in the chest. He didn't die, but he got shot in the chest. He could have died. Sorry to derail it, but I think this movie is a little <laughs> bit racist. Huh? Uh, I kind of <laughs> there was a few pickup. Well, just like when Jackie Chan like is surprised Uncle Bill is marrying a black woman. Like you oh, and they, yeah, and they do like this whole singing number with her too. Yeah. That seemed a little bit odd. <laughs> like, is it just because she's a, wonder, a black woman know, maybe, who's a little bit heavier? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that was like, she's like, "Hey, look, I have singing chops. Let me sing," or if it was them being like racist. <laughs> that, it's, this... it could be, it's fifty-fifty. Is she actually like a known singer? She's probably. Yeah, I was like, which is racist of me to say that. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't see anything on uh, Letterbox right here. But yeah, it's just kind of weird. Uh, I'm just realizing that now, though. Like there, there was a lot of weird racial stuff in here that is kind of surface level. Like you maybe you don't realize it while you're watching it in the moment. But yeah. like the fact that like only the four black guys in the car, and then the guy in the wood chipper. That's five, and then the, the guy smoking the cigar. That's it was. The only people who die in this movie are, are, are black men. That's kind of that's kind of weird. Yeah, that is very weird. Yeah. Well, then, is there <laughs> any other uh, scenes you guys wanted to talk about? Yeah, where do we go from here? Sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah, I say that it's. Um. Well, we can talk more about like the the ending because I feel like there's a lot more. Oh we yeah. Can say about it, other than Not like a... the actual ending. <laughs> <laughs> talk about how. Uh... The hovercraft was only fixed by uh, duct tape. We already mentioned that. Yeah, I know. I mean, duct tape's pretty strong. It would have probably worked. <laughs> I doubt it. No, I think I think so. Um, I think that's okay. plausible. Okay. I mean, you get a hovercraft like that one, and you uh, rip it and then duct tape it and let us know. Duct tape has repaired much worse damage on vehicles. Mm-hmm. Plus, all you need for a hovercraft is for it to be is for that pa- the hole to be patched for it to work again. So, I feel like duct tape would be fine. That's yeah. yeah I feel like it's believable. Like, the main patch itself across the slit didn't look like it was just duct tape. It looked like it was maybe like an actual specific hovercraft patch, and then duct tape X's across it to hold it yeah. into extra place. I I like out of everything that happened at the end, I have no problem believing that duct tape fixed the hovercraft. <laughs> but then yeah. again, I think they're just trying to go for that goofy side of it, you know. Maybe. What's not believable is how like they were like, oh, forget the diamonds, just you know, let's just get out of there. That was I don't think they would have let go of the diamonds like that after all that. Yeah. Trouble. After a whole movie yeah. of trying to find the diamonds, at the end they're like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That made no sense. Also. 
And I do like how Jackie Chan survives the hovercraft by getting buried in the sand. I think that was a pretty yeah. good scene. Um, well, sucks for everyone else, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I mean, the hovercraft, I mean, it's just a bag of air. You know, being was lifted like it, that's how it probably. I mean, he probably was really run over by it. The unbelievable thing was that the when they ran over the boss, it ripped up his clothes. Yeah, the fans aren't just exposed underneath it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it would have to deflate for the fans to even get close to him. Yeah. Well, let's well, let me just Google it real quick. Can can a can can you can you survive getting run over by a <laughs> hover? craft <laughs> this is a job for mythbusters <laughs> uh oh, what if someone w was floated over by a hovercraft it would be unpleasant but with a bit of luck it's not fatal so there you go with a bit of luck a bit of luck i feel like you don't need luck it'd be uncomfortable yes but and like if they stopped on you then yeah that that would be worse i think but... the only one that would be questionable is jackie chan getting run over on the beach no, that one actually is that's, plausible. Yeah, that's believable because I imagine that sand. he like that he would sink you can a little bit in the sand. sand. You know, then I don't know. Think well, you lose yeah. it. maybe at least lose your lose breath consciousness. For a second. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, conscious. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. you passed over him in like five to ten seconds. Like you can definitely hold your breath that long. Yeah, I think the problem, you know, the, the luck part comes in when it like stops and hovers over you or something like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, I find it completely possible that he could get buried in the sand by the force of the air coming down, and he could survive with no bruises or scratches. Or yeah, because the sand is cheeks. loose enough. They could yeah. just very, very easily just, you know, dip into the, the loose sand. But we need Mythbusters on it right away. <laughs> right away. Yeah. They're going to listen to us and be like, all right, Did let's anyone... get out of retirement. <laughs> yes. Did anyone notice how, like, when he rescued the child and threw the child to... To the mother, like that was the fakest doll I have ever oh, seen. Oh yeah, in my that life. was. <laughs> <laughs> there was like, a few clearly like that, yeah. doll. They they put no effort into trying to make it look real. Or the guy that uh got hit by the hovercraft, and you tell he was clearly on a uh like a line or something, and he runs into the tree or he yeah. flies into the tree. Mm. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, which like on one hand it's like okay, I guess if you aren't laying flat, it. It might you might bounce off it because it is just a rubber ball basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, unlucky I guess to hit the tree. It's mm -hmm. only a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> he only broke his nose and crushed his skull and crushed his sternum. But and... he didn't die. He's yeah, fine. He didn't die. <laughs> Yeah, I, watching the bloopers, it's kind of hard to believe that on the simplest of, like, jumps, Jackie Chan breaks his ankle or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it looks like just like a regular kind of fall, you know, but he must have hit, landed awkwardly and just, there yeah. you go. Know. Yeah, then you he see him see... do the, the big jump, and he's, he was did that fine. And then, yeah, that's a little... Oh, across the building? That was crazy. Yeah, a crazy yeah. jump. <laughs> yeah. And then he he broke his foot doing just a minor jump, which, again, yeah, well, just I guess... rat. Bad. Yeah, he he broke his ankle like jumping and landing on the moving hovercraft. So I guess because it was moving, maybe he didn't. He kind of mm, like yeah, the momentum. It. Yeah, something about him inertia or whatever. Mm. Yeah, this movie actually had a, a couple of um, bad injuries, I guess, because the, yeah. the one guy who got the um, what is that thing called in the parking garage that comes down the gate or whatever slammed into mm. him. I guess, he had oh. to be taken away on a stretcher. There was a woman yeah. who. Oh, the woman in the bike. The blonde yeah, bike the, girl. Yeah, like the, bike yeah, the blonde bike girl. Yeah, she had to be taken away in a stretcher. Um, At least three ambulance rides. Right. So that Probably girl more. on off the table or plastic table, or whatever. Oh yeah, that was there. That was like the wedding scene that was yeah. cut out. Like that was one of the things that like oh, was that Elaine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Elaine was like on a table or something and fell, and Jackie had to catch her. <laughs> But I don't think she got injured on that. She looked a little shaken up. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was just so awestruck by Jackie Chan's muscles. Yeah. Yeah. She was shaken. <laughs> <laughs> Not stirred. No, it's wrong franchise. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. All right, then. Um, are we ready to wrap up? Uh, yeah. I am. Any last words? I believe so. All right. I guess I'll go first. So, yeah, we had, we all had like a lot of uh, criticism towards the movie. And, uh, you know, rightfully so. It's uh, definitely a very 90s movie with its uh, cheesiness and um, things that are like kind of looked very low budget. But at the end of the day, we're all here for Jackie Chan. And I still ended up enjoying this movie a lot. The, the fight scenes were really good. And, you know, I love seeing Jackie Chan fight with literally everything that's not a weapon as a weapon. It's always enjoyable. <laughs> And uh, the action was really good. It sucks that the dubbing was so weird. That it definitely brings it down a lot. Um, I wasn't really thrown off that much about the sudden ending. Because I guess I'm just used to it at this point from Jackie Chan movies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did actually enjoy this movie a lot at the end of the day. Even with all the criticisms. So I would probably give it a uh, 3.5 out of 5. Alrighty. Well, um, yeah, I mean, this, this this movie has some great stunts and some great choreography mixed in. But for the most part, that doesn't make up for the lack of a truly coherent plot um, or a proper ending to the movie. You know, this this one really, like, out of all the Jackie Chan movies we've seen, like, this one feels like it needed that ending the most out of a lot of them. <laughs> um and yeah, the, the dubbing was just awful. Like, if this movie's in English, shouldn't we just be hearing the English actors? Like, I, I like, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm curious, but I'm not curious enough to look it up. But I am curious to see what the Chinese dubbing sounds like, because maybe it's better, maybe it's worse. Who knows? We've heard, we've heard dubbing in for English voice actors in past Jackie Chan movies, and they haven't been much better. So, it kind of sucks that this movie's brought down so much by that. Because maybe it would have been fine if the actors were just, you know, on set throwing their lines out there, you know? Um, but yeah, all in all, I, I just, I didn't find it to be super enjoyable. There were enjoyable moments for sure. And there was some really good set pieces and, you know, the whole ending with the hovercraft was kind of cool, but it doesn't make up for the criticism that I have for it. So I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five. Okay. Um, yeah, great scenes. Uh, the action scenes were really good. I like the, you know, the whole bar scene where they're fighting on the pool table. Uh, the ending, you know, it was fun. It was, you know, uh, like, it was fun. It was, you know, it was there. But like Yemi said, you know, it just kind of had no story plot. And the ending just kind of, they're like, oh, it's just all of a sudden cut to the bloopers and cut to, you know, the injuries. You're like, okay. Uh, the dubbing, it was a little much in this one. Um, and that kid, I got uh, you guys kind of, you know, calmed me down with it, but I was a little annoyed with the kid and just his voice. I know it wasn't him, but it's just like the dubbing for that kid specifically. Um, but I don't know. I just wasn't I was, wasn't was vibing with the movie until the end of uh, Hoverboard Chase and all that and all that, you know, exciting stuff at the end. But I don't I, At the end, I'm just going to have to give it a two out of five. All right. Um, well, like I said, you guys have touched on a lot. I mean, the script story was all over the place. Like, they couldn't decide if it was a serious movie, a funny movie. They didn't hit that mark. Um, the dialogue was just so bad. And then they dubbed it all over, which made it just even worse and more noticeable. Um, you know, it did have some good action scenes. It was fun to watch. But yeah, overall, uh, yeah, I'd probably give it a 2.5 as well. No surprise that I'm the highest uh, rating. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, don't worry, Kals. I've been there before. <laughs> all right. Well, um, as you all know, the fan vote happened during the last episode. They always happen during Tay's episode. He's very special. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, the four out of the four movies you could choose from last week, Parasite from 2019 ended up winning, which was recommended by Player Two P Two, and maybe we can get him on the podcast for the for his episode once again. That'd be really fun to have him back on. I'll have to talk to oh. him about that. 
I guess Please. I won't be on this episode because <laughs> I think you two have never been on an episode together. <laughs> well, no, I don't. Th- I think we have. I think we have. I don't know. Nope, he's only been on one episode, so. Okay. Um, but this was directed by Bong Joon Ho. Um, it's about an, or I'm sorry, the synopsis is an uh, all unemployed uh, key key tax key. key he takes, I don't know how that to pronounce that name, his family takes pe- peculiar interest in the wealthy and glamorous parks for their livelihood um, until they get entangled in an unexpected incident. I feel like that synopsis was pretty bad. Let me let me look up yeah, that was a different weird. one. Greed and class thing. discrimination threaten the newly formed symbiotic relationship between the wealthy park family and the des- destitute, destitute Kim clan. Kim clan? Yeah, I don't so know it's, if it's sound, better it's, either. It's, but... It sounds like um, you know, Jimmy Neutron's dad versus the neighbor, you know. It sounds <laughs> yeah, like it's yes. two dueling families uh, in the end. Um and this this stars Song Kang Ho, Lee Sun Kun, Cho Yo Jung, <laughs> Choi <laughs> Wu Shik, and many, many more. Um spoiler alert, uh, this movie won a lot of awards at the uh, Academy Awards. So um, going in with a bit of high expectations on this one personally, just knowing how how well received this one was, uh, but I never saw it before, so I'm very ins- excited yeah, to seen. finally like said, give a watch. It was on my list to uh, suggest at some point. Oh. So, now so I'm the only know. one that has seen it out of all of us. Interesting. Yeah, I think I so. so. Unless P2 right. comes up. I mean, I, yeah, Peach's probably seen it since he recommended it. I would hope so. Probably. Well, you never know. <laughs> But yeah, if you don't want to be spoiled or if you want to join the conversation for Parasite from 2019, please watch it before the next episode, which will air in two weeks. These episodes always come out every two weeks. Um, other than that, uh, not not much else to say except uh, get ready for episode 100. It's coming up. I'm going to probably talk about it every single time until it's finally <laughs> here. Yeah, um, you got to remind all the people. But it is, it's coming. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> I'm very excited to reveal the movies, but we'll reveal those the episode before. Um, oh, wow. It? You're waiting until the very the episode before. Wow. Got to okay. keep, them, keep them on yeah. their toes. Keep them wanted. On, on my episode. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you get a few special now. Yeah, unless announce it then. Unless episode 100 is af- is the is the one after the fan vote. Uh, oh, that, oh that well, the fan vote is still happening? Okay. so no, Well, if it's fan vote... No. Ep- would be episode 100 if 100 doesn't line up like i'm thinking it will we'd have to do a fan vote and then episode 100 okay so yeah because my episode would be 99 and then i guess fan vote 100th yeah so if it does end up on 100 then we're doing episode 100 with episode 100 (laughs) i I haven't mapped it out in my head yet so i i'm saying if if for whatever reason something crazy (laughs) happens and we're off by one we'll probably do a fan vote or something before we're not going to be, it seems like. It seems like you've all already done the math, so we're good. Yeah, yeah, I got it all written down here. <laughs> Perfect. At least one of us is keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my next suggestion does fall on 99. Yeah. All right. Well, um, does anyone else have anything they want to mention before we end the show? Well, do you know. Just besides, be sure to clean your ass. Yeah, clean your ass. Damn, we're in a tight squeeze. <laughs> Callus, please squeeze Callus. me hard. <laughs> Callus, did you forget to clean your ass? Is that why you're in a tight squeeze? Mm. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Well, I have been Kyung the Ferret, and I've been here with. Oh, what was I? Shit. Uh, Rum- Rumble, uh, Rumble Waffles. waffles. Yeah. <laughs> Rumble Waffles. Uh, Uncle Tay. And Auntie Callus, I guess. <laughs> And this has been another episode of Film Freaks with a Z. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Does this mean that me and Tay are married? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Don't tell my wife.